around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. said you wanted to see me. Yeah. Well, it better be important, mister. I don't make a habit of coming running when some saddle punk whistles. Yeah, maybe you hadn't ought to make a habit of calling people saddle punks. <laughs> no offense. Just an expression. Sure. I came up from the Pecos country. Been here in Dodge about a week. Maybe you've seen me around. I've seen you. I've been talking to people. Oh. Everybody tells me you was a big shot back in Abilene. Had all the games sewed up. Three or four saloons paying off. A couple of hotels and so on. Then the boom busted and you come here. Since you've been here, you got nowheres. You know why? You're talking. You tell me why. Dylan, A fellow named Matt Dillon. You tried to scare him and he wouldn't scare. So you tried to buy him. He wouldn't buy. Tried breaking him and he wouldn't break. So? Be worth a thousand dollars to you if I kill him? Uh, It might. All right. Get it in gold. Keep it handy. Am I hired? Yeah. Yeah, you're hired. Chester, you haven't said three words in the last 20 minutes. That's not like you. Well, I... <sighs> Mr. Dillon, did you ever get a funny feeling that somebody was keeping an eye on you? Ah, uh, yeah, but... Uh... Well, I got one right now. You know, Chester, I think you got a touch of the heebie-jeebies. As far as I can see, there's nobody in the whole place paying any attention to us. Somebody is. I had the same feeling the day the Butler brothers come back from San Fe. Yeah? I didn't even know they was in town, but I knew somebody was getting ready to call us. And about six o'clock that evening, they made their play. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. I was one of the hall bears next day. Well, it's the same doggone thing right now. <sighs> You know, I think you've got the wind up over nothing, Chester. Uh, Town's never been quieter. Jail's been empty for two weeks. The only new faces around is that bunch of trail drivers that came up from the Pecos. They're all strangers. Oh, Marshal. There you be. Huh? Been looking all over for you. Oh, hiya, Billy. I waited over to jail for nine hours to an hour. I got to talk to you, Marshal. You know, Billy, every time I've given you money, you bought yourself a bottle and stayed blind drunk for two days. Well, it ain't money this time, Marshal. I, I got something to tell you. Well, what? Something I heard. There's a couple of fellas talking over by the Lear's table. They didn't see me. I was back of the water trough. Sort of, uh, well, uh, resting, you might say. Well, you know how it is, Marshal. Yeah, I know. A man gets dry in this prairie country. What were they talking about, Billy? About you. One of them offered to kill you for $1,000 in gold, and the other one took him up on it. Oh. 
Who were they, Billy? Do you know them? Uh, no, sir. It is dark, and I didn't recognize their voices. They was already there when I woke up, and they left right after that. Uh-huh. Well, uh, maybe it was some kind of a joke. It didn't sound that way to me. It ain't no joke, Mr. Dunn. I told you I felt it. There's somebody around who's been hired to kill you. Can you figure who'd want to do such a thing, Mr. Dillon? Well, I can figure a dozen or two, Chester. Well, I, I mean... Now, here we are. Come on. Morning, Marshal. I haven't seen you since the robbery last month. Attempted robbery, Mr. Barkin. So it was, thanks to you. Well, Marshal, the bank's at your service. What can I do for you? Give me some information, if you will. Well, if it isn't confidential. It is, but I want it anyway. Well, I hardly know what to say. Uh, perhaps we'd better step into my office. All right. Uh, this way, gentlemen. Thank you. Now... Just what was it you wanted to know? I want to know whether one of your customers has drawn a thousand dollars in gold from the bank in the last few days. Any particular person in mind? Oh, that's what I want to find out. Well, I hope this won't go any farther, Marshal. Who was it, Mr. Barkin? I certainly wish to make it clear that I don't approve of this man, but after all, he is a good customer, and it's not my place. Yeah, I know. Who was it? Lawson Hale. Lawson Hale? He took the gold out just this morning, as a matter of fact. Said he was working on a cattle deal of some sort. I do hope you'll regard this as confidential, gentlemen. Yeah, sure. Well, Chester, we know who one of them is now. Mm, but who's the other? The one who's actually going to do it? Some punk who wants a thousand dollars bad. Doesn't care much how he gets it. That sure don't narrow it down any. Oh. I know. <laughs> Quiet tonight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Ain't many people out. No, no, not many. That moon's throwing quite a bit of light. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it is. Kind of makes a target out of a man. Yeah, it does, kind of. If somebody was out to shoot somebody, this would sure be a good night for it. I suppose so. Mr. Dillon, would you mind if I make a comment? I thought that's what you were doing, Chester. Let's go on back to jail and stay off the streets. This way, you're just asking for it. Look, Chester, if it's going to come, it'll come. I'd rather meet it halfway than to sit and wait for it. Asking for it? Asking for it? That's what you're doing. It's been two days now, Chester. And it gets on your nerves. When you go out to bring a man in, you know you may have trouble and you're ready for it, but... But this way, it's... Well... I understand, Mr. Dillon. Kindly bothers a man. Yeah. Let's walk on down to the Long Branch. Hello, Kitty. Oh, Doc. Hey, how are you, Matt? Oh, it's good to see you, Matt. You've been avoiding us the last couple of days. <laughs> been busy, Kitty. Uh, want to sit down? Uh, I, I don't think so. Not right now, anyway. Oh. Something bothering you, Matt? Huh? Bothering me? Well, yes, you seem to be on edge about something. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what? Lost and Hale just come in. Down the bar there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I ought to have a talk with him, Chester. Well, that's one way. Now, that's the one I haven't tried yet. Excuse me, Kitty. Doc. Sure, Matt. Yeah, Matt, now you'll be careful. Good days, all. Take your word. 
And I had it right in the palm of my hand. The minute the trail driver hit that town, the boys grab her pay and they'd head straight for one of the... Something I can do for you. Yeah. I want to talk to you, Hale. Well, I don't see nothing stopping you. Let's uh, move down the bar away, huh? Sorry, but I'm fine right here. Now, why don't we move down the bar away? Well, if it's that important to you, pardon me, boys, but sure, sure. come Excuse back me. and finish that story. Is this far enough? Yeah, yeah, it's far enough. I, uh, I understand you hired yourself a gunman. And you sent him out to get me. You've offered him $1,000 in gold. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Billy. You wouldn't care to tell me his name, would you? Uh, no, I, I don't think so, because, you see, I don't know nothing about What's it. What's he waiting for? He's had two days now, and he hasn't made a move. Well, like, like I Why say, don't you I'm... do the job, Hale? Well, you're wearing a gun. Maybe you can save yourself some money. I've got no quarrel with you. You mean you're yellow? Scared to call your own place? I said I've got... You're a weaseling, no good coward, Hale. I let that ride for the time being. Yeah, I thought you would. Come on, Chester, let's get some fresh air. All right, sure. See you later, Kitty. Doc. All right, man. Well, I guess he just ain't the kind to take chances, Mr. Jones. He doesn't need to, Chester. He's got a higher killer problem somewhere around. Yeah, if I only knew who he'd hired, I could force the play myself. This business of having to leave it up to the other man... Over there by the stable. Yeah, I saw the flash. Reckon you got him, Mr. Dillon? I don't know. Let's move in. Now watch yourself. He may be playing possum. Yes, sir. The flash is right here by the corner. Yeah. Well, that's that. Looks like he got away. He's gone, all right. Took one shot and run for cover. But he'll be back. I think that fire feels real good. Old jail seems kindly cozy. Anyway, it's a lot better than prowling them streets waiting for somebody to put a bullet in your back. Chester! I... Will you stop squeaking that chair? Uh, sorry, Mr. Dillon. Two more days gone by and he hasn't made another move. Yes, sir. Uh, that cottonwood shore burns up fast. I guess I better shake down the stove and throw another... Chunk wait a of minute, wood. wait a minute. Wait mm -hmm. a minute. Might be a way at that, Chester. Loss and hail. That's the only fact we're sure of. Loss and hail. It'd be kind of hard to prove anything, Mr. Dillon. Who said anything about proving it? I got an idea. Come on. I, I've been thinking, Mr. Dillon, you ain't got no evidence uh, to arrest Hale, I mean. I know, but I can scare him. And if I figure him right, I think he'll scare easy. Maybe so, but all the same. Ah, there he is now, Chester. Just came out of the long branch. Mm. Wonder who them two women is. Uh, hanging around for the free drinks. There's not an ounce of nerve in a dozen like that. Come on. <laughs> Hale. Hold it, Hale, right where you are. Uh, what, what what seems to be trouble now? Mark? No trouble unless you want to make some. You're under arrest. I... What for? I'll think of something. Well, 
You taking me in without even making a charge? I'll remind you there's witnesses here. Yeah, so I notice. When they're not hanging around you, they're after somebody else. What have you done, Hale? Hired them too? I asked you what the charge was, Marshal. Vagrancy. Vagrancy? As far as I know, you've never had any visible means of support as long as you've been in I'll match any dollar of yours a hundred better ones. Fine. That'll help pass the time. Uh, Now, look at here, Marshal. Shut up. All right, boys, break it up. The party's over. You had your last free drink out of this pump. Now, let's go to jail. Keep walking. It's the last cell on the left. Oh, Dylan. Dylan, I'll break you for this, so help me. Uh, You've been trying it for a year, and I'm still around. You won't be after this. Chester, unlock the door. Yes, sir. All right, get inside. Uh, Make yourself at home. Nothing to hold me on. Nothing at all. I'll be out of here by tomorrow noon. I doubt that. In fact, there's a pretty good chance you'll never get out of that cell. Not alive, at least. <laughs> what are you talking about? According to the law, I've got... The law, right. huh? You've broken it every chance you've got. Tried to break the men who serve it. But when your own neck gets caught, you start hiding behind the never law. Nevertheless. All right, Dylan. fine. Right now, the law out here is kind of sketchy. Now, this little affair between you and me is one of the things the law doesn't quite cover. I'm going to run it my way. Yeah, kind of talk isn't going to help you. You've hired a man to kill me, offered him $1,000 to get me out of the way. You can't prove that. He's made one try and missed. He's still around dark somewhere waiting. And he'll try again. That's your problem. That's not mine. I don't know anything about it. You know what'll happen, though, if he does get me? The first thing Chester's going to do is to come straight back here to the jail and pop a couple of bullets through these bars. Huh? Now, your boy may kill me, Hale, but you're not going to live to profit he, by it. He, he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't do that. A shoot down a helpless prisoner? No, neither one of you would do it. Chester and I have been friends for a long time. Why don't you ask him whether he'd do it or not? You bet I'd do it. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't do You that. heard somebody shoot Mr. Dillon in the back? I don't see where you got any kick coming. Well, there's your answer, Hale. No, he wouldn't. Come on, Chester. Let's go look the town over. No. No, well, it's tonight that he's going to... Oh? Tonight, who's going to do what? I I, I, I don't know. I I, I, I don't know anything about it. I don't know. Well, that's too bad. If I knew his name, I'd have a lot better chance... And so would you. Well, see you later. Or anyway, Chester will. No. No, Dylan, you can't do it. Dylan, you can't go out in the street. He'll get you sure. Dylan, no. No. Wait a minute. I'll I'll, I'll tell you his name. All right. He's a a trail driver. He came up from the Pecos last week. His name is... His name is Ed Ed Granger. Ed Granger? Yeah, you, you, you've you've seen him around the bars. He's dark haired, surly looking fellow. He's got a scar across the cheek. Come on, Chester, let's go get him. He's here, all right, Mr. Jones. He'll live at the end of the bar. Yeah. Looks like he's by himself. What are you going to do? Arrest him? Well, there's no evidence, Chester. Only one way I see is to make it personal. You stay out of it. Just cover me, that's all. Yes, sir. Your name Ed Granger? <laughs> Might be. You know who I am? Judging by the star, I reckon you're U.S. Marshal. Oh, you ought to do better than that. After all, I'm worth a thousand dollars to you. Who says so? Lawson Hale. Hale? Your memory's getting better, huh? I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. Sure you do. That deal you made with Hale. 
He told me all about it after I threw him in jail and persuaded him a little. I told you, I don't know anything. You're wearing a gun there, Granger. Why don't you draw it and go for the thousand dollars? Why don't you take a chance? This fellow you're talking about's in jail. I reckon he wouldn't have anybody working for him now, would he? You tell me. I got no reason to draw on you, Marshal. Not unless my back's turned, huh? I ain't drawing. Granger, you tried to kill me night before last. Can you prove that? If I could, you'd either be in jail or dead right now. Well, since you can't prove it, what's the argument? Just that I don't like the idea of somebody trying to shoot me in the back. Now, if you're any man at all, we'll settle this right here and now. You leave me alone, Marshal. <laughs> you still figure you got no reason to draw on me? I ain't drawing. All right, Granger, you got ten minutes to get out of town, and when you're out, stay out. Don't come back now or ever, you understand? Yes, sir. Now you can start right now. <laughs> Must be nearly midnight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, about that, I guess. I declare this is sure one day I'm glad it is over. Yeah, so am I. At least I can breathe a little easier now. I'll just get the fire built up a little. No, I'll leave it, Chester. Take care of the prisoner first. You, you still ain't got no evidence. What are we going to do about him? Same as with Granger. Turn him loose, run him out of town. I should have done it months ago. Go on and get him, huh? All right, sir. must have stopped by here on his way out of town. Looks like he got hailed over to the window for a talk and, and grabbed him and cut his throat right there. Yeah. Figured Hale had sold him out. Got a bulletin on the wire, Chester. Wanted for murder, Ed Granger. All right, Mr. Dillon. I guess Hale got pretty much what he bargained for. He hired himself a killer in order to kill him. He got it. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Ralph Moody, and Joseph Kearns. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Hawkins is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. CBS Radio in Los Angeles.